Now, the children of Israel, what's going on with them is that they've been under bondage for many years in the kingdom of Babylon. And they've been in bondage for many years. And finally, they get a break from the Lord to get a chance to serve him. And when they come to now serve him, Ezra, he says to the Lord, I like the phrase, to give us a nail in his holy place. You got to understand this, God, he gives you a nail. And this one nail can lay the whole foundation to building the entire temple and building up the entire city. That's good. So you got to realize that one nail out of place can mean a lot. And one nail can mean a significant deal to pleasing the Lord and how you're going to serve him with your life. So I hope today's message it will convict you, it will be a blessing to you, and that the Lord will speak to your heart. Because I do know this, Satan, he is right now trying to find any nail out of place. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he's doing. Yeah. And we cannot allow the devil to do that. Nope. Let's pray. God, my Father, I want to thank you so much for salvation through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much that the camera is now working. Thank you so much for the special that was sung. Thank you, thank you so much for the people that were here. And I pray, dear Lord God, that people who came to church today, that uh, they will not feel burdened or uneasy in anything that was said and done in church today, mm -hmm. but that they will be blessed, they will be lifted up, yeah. and that you will get the glory, Lord. Yeah. You will get the glory. God, I need you. I pray that my own thoughts, my own flesh will be put aside and that you will guide the words in my mouth so that people can see that this is not Gene Kim saying something, but that rather it is you, your Holy Spirit. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that whether the sermon reaches somebody here or everybody here or perhaps no one, Lord, that you would get the glory and that lives would nevertheless be changed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 My first point, use what is granted. Use what is granted. And now for a little space, grace hath been showed from the Lord our God. So my first point is that God, he grants you a little space. A little space hath been gra graced. Excuse me, use what is graced. Did I say granted? Grace, sorry. I was looking at point number three right there. What was going on? Use what is graced. So notice right here the first part of the verse, it says, And now for a little space, grace hath been showed from the Lord our God. What the Lord has graced upon your life, what you need to do is that you need every single nail of his grace. That's what you desperately need. You need every single nail of his grace so that you can be more blessed, so that God can be more magnified above all else. So I'm sure you, want, you can agree, you want every single nail of his grace so that we can be more blessed, successful, strong spirit powered and gain a better life so you got to realize this you got to check up every nail in your life and are you using the full grace of god upon you because why is that important preacher the reason why it's so important is that because if you have a partial part of his grace that's why you're going through a partial part of either chastisement either satanic attacks and affliction without protection so that's why you need the full grace of god See, it doesn't matter how many souls you let to salvation, how great our church is going, because a lot of you know that even though you have some fruits, you can boast to the Lord, there are still some burdens, yes, some yeah. afflictions Amen. and attacks. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to cover all bases and see if there's a nail out of place, which is why the devil was able to find a little, small, little loophole, because this nail was not in it. And that's why he... One little hole was enough for him to go inside and to start attacking your life. Yeah. You need to check up yourself in these nails. Bible reading. Have you been reading your Bible faithfully? Have you been memorizing the words, studying the word? Because God's words gives us the needed grace. Acts chapter 20 verse 32 says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Have you been falling your, behind in your Bible reading? How many people here have been reading their Bible faithfully? How's your prayer life? You need to pray. If some of you haven't been praying, then the reason why is because you haven't been praying 
And thus Satan attacks this church even more, attacks your life even more. If you can go get by Satan's attack without prayer, God bless your life because you're going to need all the blessing you can get. You need prayer. You need prayer so that you can ask for God's grace to fall upon you. Hebrews 4.16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So you need to have a good prayer life so that you can get more of God's grace upon you. Gifts. How are your gifts? Because that talent does something great in your life. So we heard a brother singing today, right? We had some people playing. Uh, we had a brother here playing the piano. We had people singing along. We had people helping out trying to set up the church. We had people willing to bring in food to use their talents to help out the church. The more talent you bring, the more this church can become better. The more the fellowship can be sweeter. The more that pastor's teaching and preaching can even be more effective because he can rely on the people to take care of things, whereas he can focus more onto the preaching and teaching. So you got to realize this, is that whatever gift you have, are you using it to the glory of God? Use what is graced. Another thing God graced upon you is even your own money. Tithing, you got to realize, is that you got to give to the Lord because God gave all of it to you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 through 8, Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, for God loveth a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. You see, there is something with God's grace with more money. We're not talking about television preachers here. We're not talking about even preachers who keep asking for money all the time. All right? I really don't believe in that. And people who've been watching me for months to years, you know I don't believe in that because I didn't even give you a donation button at that time. A lot of you were asking. So you got to realize this is that this is not to squeeze out people's money, but rather that you don't miss out yeah. the blessing. That's right. You That's don't right. miss out God's more opportunity of his grace upon you. Amen. Ministry participation. How well do you participate in the ministry? Because those who participate more will receive God's special grace even more. Because his special grace is on ministers. Didn't you know that? Thus participating even closer to the ministry and the minister itself, you get even a closer of the grace. Philippians chapter 1, verse 7, Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace, Paul says. Wow, what an opportunity, because they participated with Paul. Knowledge, how well are you using your knowledge? Because you learn more on receiving God's grace. In 2 Peter 1, 2, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. You got to realize this. That's why a lot of people don't experience God's grace because they don't have any knowledge of the scripture and they go to false churches, yeah. heretical meetings. They listen to some uh, cultists online yeah. and there's already too much of that. And they have a heart where they might love Jesus. They want to do great things for him. Just like Muslims and Hindus and Catholics and all other religions too. They have a heart that they want to do what is well and pleasing to their own God. But you know what? All of that is a waste because they didn't have knowledge of the truth. How well do you know the truth? If you don't know the truth, that's why you're going to one day walk out of the meeting mad because you're going to disagree with the teaching. That's why one day you're going to get deceived by somebody teaching online when he pulls up some ad hominem arguments and use up some kind of nice graphic design thinking that that's how you fool the people. That's good right there. Because they know that they can fool people with pictures rather than with the word of God. Amen. Amen. Yes, that's right. Another thing is subjection with genuine humility. Because God's grace is never given to those who think of themselves. So when you submit, you can't just listen. There are people who listen and who do things in the church, but they do it with their whole heart, not in it. That's why it's important to have genuine humility. Because God knows a truly a humble person or a pretending humble person. And when God looks at the heart, then he'll know this guy is truly humble. So I'm going to give more of my grace upon the person. 
Why didn't you experience God's grace on your life? Because there's something in your heart that's rebellious. There's something in your heart that does not want to follow things. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, might yeah. just help clean up the room. You might help out in teaching and preaching in the church, but there's going to be something in your heart with that little rebel streak in you, and you're going to go, well, I don't like it. I can do it a different way, and I disagree with how... Uh, the pastor does things. No Guess ready. what, man? You got to realize this is that all have sin, including your that's pastor. Right. But the Lord is trying to test your heart to that's, see that's right. how well that's can you right. listen to the min to the minister, a small time minister right there. That way I can put you in a bigger ministry that's one day. Yeah. You, the Bible says, likewise, ye younger. First Peter 5, 5, submit yourselves unto the elder. Those who are in charge of God's ministry. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. You come to him and you beg for God's grace, he's going to resist you. Yeah. You pray to him, he's going to resist you. Because no matter what kind of duty you have to help out the church, no matter how great is your Christian life on the outside, deep down inside there's that little rebel streak in you. And that little That's rebel right. streak, the Lord will say, nope, not you. I'm going to find somebody else in the church that That's I can good. use for my glory. Good, you won't last long, trust me. You can maintain your Christian walk, live right, serve God right, and stuff like that, but you won't last long, trust me. Because the Lord, He's a God, He's a He's a God Almighty, where He's gonna try your heart even more and more and more. Amen. Put you in more humiliating situations to try out your humility and see. Good. Unless it's blatant heresy and blatant sin, then don't by all means, please, I would encourage you, leave that church. Leave the pastor. And that includes me too. But you got to realize this, aside something that's blatant sin and blatant heresy, you got to realize this, is that everyone is imperfect and God's trying to test your heart on how humble you are. Because this verse says not just the minister, it says, yea, all of you be subject, what? One to another. How well are you in subjecting to other people too? The Lord's testing that out. He's trying to see if that some one day one of you guys will uh, have an uncomfortable feeling or a fight against each other. On, the Lord is going to put up one day where one of you guys might be a backslider and this person might be a more righteous Christian and be judgmental. One day the Lord's going to put you in a situation where you messed up in something That's and good. this person That's will be the prideful yeah. spirit that will put you oh, down. Yeah, and yeah. if we all don't submit to each other, think of others rather than ourselves. If we have the attitude that so-and-so will take care of the nursery, the kitchen, set up things in the church, I can come a little later. I know they'll take care of visitation and street oh, preaching. Oh, Do you yeah. realize how many people think like that? And that became a domino effect where the pastor was the only one doing the soul winning doing the street preaching and etc. You got to realize this is that that's why submission, genuine submission is so important where you think about one another, Good. others, not yourself. Love with genuine sincerity. Why is that? Because God's grace is given more to those who love him more. Ephesians 6, 24, grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Oh, I love you, brother. I love you, sister. No, with sincerity. I truly love you. I truly love you. Like that. Even, I mean, you got to realize this. The Lord did it in my heart as a pastor. He put situations where I was a pastor's son, and I've seen things in the church. And as a pastor, I've seen some people say some things against me. But you know what I do? I genuine and sincerely love them, no matter if the member hurt me in some way or backstabbed me in some way. Amen. And that is very important. You got to do, do you have that kind of love for a brother and sister? You might say, why should I do that, Pastor? Because you backstabbed Jesus Christ many times. Oh, and, yet, yeah, yeah, and yet he loved that's you good, unconditionally. Right, he yeah. loved you sincerely. Amen. I think I can do that for somebody who just backstabbed me a few times. Amen. Amen. How about you? You got to learn to do that. If you don't use every single nail of his grace, and I gave you a bunch of nails of his grace right here, how well are you using your prayer life, your talent, your humility, your love, etc.? If you don't use every single nail of his grace, but just one of them you do really well and the other one you're not doing so well, there's, it's going to bring two problems with you. What's going to happen is, it, one, it can create an imbalance. And this imbalance can create more problems rather than more blessings. Didn't you know that? Let me give an easy example right here. Let's say you use the nail of his grace of knowledge. 
So then you study the word, you believe the word, you grew up in the word, you never skipped a Bible study, and then you wrote down all the notes in your Bible. So you grew up so much in the grace of God with your knowledge, but then your humility life, that nail of his grace is messed up. Yeah. Then what happens? You become more of a burden rather than a blessing to the church because right. one day that knowledge is going to uh, over dominate your mind yeah. and then you're going to have the attitude of criticizing critiquing everything and then, and then pretty right. soon one day you won't even get along with anybody in the church except yourself out in the neck of the woods and you start your own online little gig That's or right. you'll just lock yourself oh. up in a room till you turn till your skin turns more white and you age up to 60 and then you just critique every bible believing pastor out there That's right. see that's what happens when you grow more in knowledge and then your humility is low. That's why it's important to look up every single nail of God's grace. Amen. Yeah. Because if you don't, then what nail so far is out of place that we looked at? Your Bible reading, how is it? Your prayer, how's it going? Your tithing, how's it going? Ministry participation, how's that going? Uh, knowledge, how's that going? Subjection with genuine humility. Love with genuine sincerity. How's that going? Here's another thing is that if you don't use every single nail of his grace, one of the most dangerous things is that you're going to become bitter. Didn't you know that? You might say, why? For example, let's say you use a particular nail of his grace really well, which is your prayer life. And you prayed so many times, faithfully, consistently, for the Lord to provide your need, and it's an urgent thing. But then you failed in God's grace where you didn't uh, have love with genuine sincerity. And because the Lord saw that, he's like, well, I can't answer your prayer because there's something in your heart. You know you got to get right with me first. But you did not check up on that other nail, which is your love. And because that was out of place... You can pray many hours you want, but God's not going to say yes until you fix that thing, no matter how many hours you add in prayer. And then what happens? Then it becomes bitterness because you think that you prayed so much and God's been unfair to you. That's good, and that's what happens. Then bitterness roots up and then you, you think that the Christian life is too hard. You think God is unfair. You think that God is not gracious and loving in your life when he truly is. He was ready to bless you and answer your prayer, but because of that dumb little nail, you refuse, you stubbornly refuse to put it back in place. It doesn't matter how many hours you pray. See, that's why one nail out of place makes a difference. One nail. You got to realize this. Well, man, I, I wasn't able to teach and preach on the pulpit. I wasn't able to win soul salvation. All right, how well have you been watching the discipleship classes? How well have you been attending the discipleship classes? Oh, well, you know, uh, I got fooled by this cult and this stuff online. Why didn't you help me cover this problem? Because that was already taught at a church service that you skipped. That's good. Right? Yeah. See, you got to realize this. Yeah. See, every nail out of place can cause greater problem and damage no matter how well you do one nail. You can do one nail really well, 10 nails really well, but one nail out of place can make a big difference. My second point is use what is given. Use what is given. If you return to our text, it says to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place. So you'll notice right here, you got to use what God gave to you. What God gave to you. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So you got to realize this. God gave you something that will profit you. I know. It's one rusty nail. See that? We feel like it's one little nail. It's a rusty nail. That's what we feel like. But you got to realize this, is that you try to look for other ways to make your life better or to accomplish more spiritual things, and you're wondering why the Lord won't give it to you. And you got to realize this. you got to take care of that one little nail first, and the Lord can put you to a bigger level. Yep. Amen. you got to realize this, is that um, I, I actually like it when some of the brethren talk about, let's do something big and street preaching. That gets me going. I'm happy. I hope that spirit never dies because that way we can keep ourselves in check and get over there one day yeah. rather than just be dead and doing nothing.
But you got to realize this. If you're not faithful in that rusty nail of street preaching every right. Sunday, Amen. don't know how to self-control yourself when you talk to a person, when you preach the gospel out on the street, when you hold a sign and all that, if you're not good at self-control with that, how can the Lord lead you to do something big one day That's right. to yeah, a big street yeah, preacher? Right. How can the Lord lead you to, oh, let's have a revival meeting. I want that. Yeah, I want it more than you. I've been waiting seven years, man. Amen. I've been waiting seven years. But how can I do that if you're not faithful enough to the rusty nail of attending every Sunday meeting? Yep. How can I do that? How can I do that? Let's sing these songs, pastors. How can I do that if there's no one singing the other songs that we've been singing? See, rusty nails. Yeah. If you're faithful, see, the, the problem with Bible believers who have a great zeal for the Lord, want to do great things for God, they want to skip all those nails. That's, good. That's the problem with onliners. That's, That's good. the problem with them. They want to jump all those little nails and boost up the subscribers and get their own following and cult. Rather than going through one little nail of submitting under a pastor. Oh, that's so hard. Years of getting discipled under a pastor. Being faithful in cleaning the floor and helping out, setting that's the good. hymn book. Oh, they hate that. They want to jump something where I'm the pastor. That's I'm the teacher. Good. I'm the oh, preacher. Really? Like that. You got to realize this. Well, you yourself too, pastor. Amen. That's why ever since I was nine... I was there every single Sunday, and I didn't drop once. Amen. The only time I would ever drop is when I was severely sick. And I'll be honest with you. All my life, all my life, I don't think I ever skipped more than 15 church services Sunday. All my life. You think the Lord put me on this pulpit without putting me through many levels first? What did I do? I, go, I went through PBI. Went through three years helping out in everything, ministering to older, old people, praying with them, and then helping out with the little kids, trying to help out in the little things. I've, I never skipped visitation street preaching. I went there with an orange vest on in street preach, in the hot, the blazing heat of the sun. I went through that years. I even went up to the masters and the doctorate. I went years. What do you think after that? Then I became a pastor? No, then I had to submit under a local church Amen. and pastor for years. Yeah, and while waiting on the Lord. You think I was all said and done? No. See, now, do you really see now your level of how many nails you're skipping? You're hopscotching? Yes, sir. How well are you faithful in the little nails? Amen. Amen. And the Lord can use you for great things. Yeah. You got to realize this, that we won't turn there for time's sake, but 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. You got to realize at that passage, David was under the severe nail of Saul's persecution. I mean, it just went down like that. And under that severe persecution, being under that nail, he was faithful to a demon-possessed king. Didn't you know that? Yeah, you think right. you think your pastor's imperfect? Yeah. Look at Saul. He was demon-possessed, man. Yeah. Amen. He was lost. He went to hell after he died. He was lost in sin, but the Lord appointed him as king, and the Lord knows when his time is up. And David submitted under that king. He had every chance to kill Saul. He had every chance to pull up a rebellion because he had the people on his side. But he was humbled to see God set him as king. God will take care of him. His time will come, not me. And do you realize when you have that attitude with every Bible-believing pastor, you can see how the Lord's going to be trying you and testing that, yeah. and then he'll use you mightily after that? Yeah, cool. Why do you think David's kingdom was outranked Saul, that Saul's kingdom didn't exist anymore? Mm -hmm. It was David's kingdom that lasted for eternity. Mm -hmm. You know why? He was humble. Saul wasn't. That's right. And he was faithful to the little nails. Saul wasn't. Mm -hmm. He was big-headed. He was like, me, me. Me, me. That's the problem. The nails. Do you realize how long David was inside that cave, wandering? He wasn't a king yet. You know when he was anointed king? When he was a little kid, before he killed Goliath. A young boy. What do you think he started doing? Yeah, I'm going to become king. No, he submitted. He worked hard. He was faithful in the little nails. He would play. He would just play a harp in front of uh, the king. Yeah. That's, that's all good. he could do. That's good, Pastor. And then the Lord was testing him year after year. And not only that, the Lord put him down even more. That's okay, right. you're now sitting on the feet of Saul playing a harp. Let's put you lower. I'm going to throw you in a cave now. Yeah. Mm. And years and years, David was in that cave. You know what he did? He was faithful in those little nails. Amen. He let God take care of Saul. 
You want to help out the king. And you got to realize this, is that if God gave David the kingdom first, what do you think would have happened to David? His character would have been completely changed. He would not have been the man he is to, to keep his kingdom together because he went through two to three rebellions almost in his kingdom. But because of David, you know it was David's kingdom that made Solomon's kingdom the most powerful, the most prosperous kingdom ever in all of Israel's history? You know why? Because of David. David faithfully picking up every nail. And he wasn't the one who built the temple either. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. How about you? You want to build the temple, yeah. but you don't want to sling that stone mm. on that yeah, giant. Good. You don't want to sit at the feet of yeah. someone else, an uh, imperfect person, and, uh, and play the harp. You don't want to be the person that will rot in a cave. You don't want to be the type of person that somebody does evil against you and you had the right and you had the people on your side. You had the power, you had the gift, but you didn't use it. You withheld it. You withheld it. See, that's what people do online. They spit out whatever they think they have in their mouth. Yeah. And they don't realize that sometimes the Lord wants you to hold back what he's given to you so that he can use it just one day for his honor and glory because he wants to see your character first, not how well you do things. Not your skill, not your talent. He wants to test your character. Nails. Nails. Because it, you got to realize this. If he didn't send the nails, it would do you more harm than good when God jumped you to become a rich man, a millionaire one day. God jumped you to be a pastor of a big church one day. God jumped you to uh, already have a family and get married. God already jumped you to this position in the church. Lord knows. It's going to do you more harm than good because you don't know how to handle those things because you never experienced the nails. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's good. John chapter 1 and verse 27, He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoe latchet I am not worthy to unloose. You got to realize as people don't use the nails they've been given because they don't like old rusty things. It's an old rusty nail. But John the Baptist, he didn't care. Shoe latchet. Shoe latchet. I'm not even worthy to unloose. You got to be careful of that attitude of yours. You got to be like John the Baptist. Because you got to realize this. You didn't, like John the Baptist said, he wasn't even worth it with an old rusty, with an old shoe latchet. He wasn't even worthy of that. You got to realize this. You think you're worthy enough to come to San Jose Bible Baptist Church? You think you're worthy enough to be saved in the Lord Jesus Christ? You think you're worthy enough to have the King James Bible in your hand? You think that you are worthy enough to get all of this knowledge of the truth right on your lap after people for centuries had to study the Bible, go through persecution to bring this knowledge to you? Somebody who will have to make it convenient to draw out a picture for you? Some Bible believers who had to write, highlight words and make the book simple so that you can understand complicated doctrines. Schools don't work that way. Bible believers, they're forced to crunch it down and make it simple for you. How spoiled and rotten we are as children. Yeah, yeah, and you think that you, you are worthy huh, to know this knowledge. You are worthy to have this book. You are worthy to come to this church. And I'm not saying our church is the best. I think that we're, I would say that we're the least. So let me say this. You're not even worth it coming to your own Bible-believing church, any Bible-believing yeah, church out there. That's the truth. Because how many people are suffering persecution and don't have the freedom to go to that's church? Right. Yeah, how many right. people don't have the freedom to preach on the street? Amen. Yeah. And they want to see people get saved. People get warned of the truth. People see the word of God. And they want to shout it out, but they can't because they're in a communist country. That's right. And you think that you're worthy to come to street preaching? No, you think it's work to come to street preaching. You think it's work to knock on a door, tell somebody how to get saved. When people over there, they don't even have that freedom. They don't have that privilege. Do you know how many people online wish that they can go to a Bible-believing church and they have no choice? That's why we try to do this live stream online. That's why I would bust my neck to do this. Why? That's why we would bust our necks to do this. Spend the time. Amen. We want people to... Enjoy the Bible-believing church service like we are. Yeah, amen. But do you know how many of them don't have the privilege to enjoy fellowship with one another? Yeah, that's right. yeah, and you think that's that it's right. work on your part to fellowship on, with other free. people, on, to make everyone feel welcome. You see this? You're not even worthy of a shoe latchet, you got to understand. Amen. Yeah, amen. Old amen. rusty nail, you didn't even deserve one nail amen. in your hand. Yeah. 
My last point is use what is granted. Use what is granted. The last part of our verse says that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. Understand this. God had granted the children of Israel something. Bless them with something. What God has granted you with now, blessed you with, don't you, don't you want to use that for the glory of God and use it to your advantage? Don't just expect that it's, it's a silver platter that's given to you. 1 Timothy 5.18, For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. If God gave you the blessing while you're not being faithful in the old rusty nails, hey, would you feel that great when there are people around you who worked harder than you for the nails that you got? but they didn't get? How guilty would you feel? How awful would you feel? How ashamed would you feel? Like a spoiled little rich kid who couldn't do anything without somebody giving it to him on a silver platter. Amen. So pastor has to keep calling you up? So members have to talk to you to keep you from coming? We have to have a nice building to maintain the thing? I have to have a whiteboard to draw for you? On, I have to make the the video i hope onlineers don't misunderstand but do i have to make the video 1080 and 4k good graphic so that you can keep they could have banned us a long time ago the yeah that's good yeah they could have we could have had no plate church building after all silicon valley you try finding a church building huh okay yeah. Have fun. This is a miracle what we got. Thank I'm happy with what I have. Very happy with what I got. Thank you got to realize this. You can't have somebody just keep giving you a silver platter. Somebody to make the food for you. Somebody to encourage you to come back to church. Somebody, uh, a, a number of people, so that you can feel like that you're not the only one coming to church. You, you can't be a spoiled kid anymore. You got to because there are so many people out there who don't have that privilege. Like right, you right. you got to be the person to drag yourself to church. You got to be right. the person that's got to help out the church. Yeah. This is good. You got to realize this. Haven't you and I been spoiled? Yeah. We've all been spoiled. Yeah. Yeah. We've had pastors already, always taking care of us. We've had pastors praying for us. We had people showing us Bible believing truth. We had people to encourage and love us. And we didn't do anything on our part. To contribute to them. Why do you think that I uh, I would put our Bible-believing churches in our internet? Because I want to contribute to them. Because they've bled, they died, they sweated, they've done so much to bring me where I'm at today in Silicon Valley. In San Francisco Bay Area to minister. This is not all of me, people online. This has been the efforts of people before me. Who sacrificed for me. I'm trying to pay them back. I don't want to be a spoiled rich kid anymore, and neither should you. Amen. Neither should this Amen. church. Neither should this church. Amen. Any of you should not be spoiled. Many times you would be surprised on the few nails or the one nail that you skipped was all that it took to start God's timing of his blessing all over again. Some of you have been waiting for God's blessing for a long time. But you know what was missing? God was ready to bless you. Ready. But it was just that one nail. Just one nail. One nail. It made all the difference. You might say, no, I don't believe that. Oh, it sure does. Because I've experienced that. You don't think I don't know? You got to realize this is that one day, my dad, he was late for church. And there was a visitor who called him. And the visitor said that he wanted to go to my dad's church. My dad said that it's right over there in the location. But then the visitor who called said, I don't see anybody at the church. So my dad was rushing. And guess what? The visitor never came back. It was at a moment where my dad could have increased his membership with one more person. Because he was a small church that time. But just that one little nail out of place, being late, yep. being late, made all the difference. And the person probably never became a Bible believer after that. I'll even put my testimony right here because I'm just as guilty as you. Come on. All right. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm deliberately pointing out people and not me. I, this is for everybody. That's good. Amen. You got to realize this is that uh, there was one. I mean, I never skipped soul winning, 
but there was this one time that I was just so busy and I'm going to give all the excuses. That way you can picture yourself as me. I'm like you. I'm like you. I, mean, I wasn't feeling great. I had a lot of work on my plate. There was no way that I could make time. I was like, you know, I know because I've been through 10 weeks soul winning by myself. I've been, no, excuse me, months. Just this one day is not a big deal. And then guess what? There was this one member who wanted to come to soul winning and help out. And I was like, uh, well, not for that day, but the next week we will. I mean, it was just that one soul winning. Guess what? The member never came back after that for a long, long time. All because I bailed out and post, not, not bailed out, I just postponed, see? Yeah. I just postponed one soul winning thing. And I never had that member for a long, long time. See, that one rusty nail could, have, could make a big difference, you got to understand. Look at the nails that you have in your life and realize it can make a big difference. 1 Peter 1.16 says, because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Hey, losing one nail is enough to lose the blessing. You know why? You serve not a 99% God who's perfect, a 100% perfect God. He expects all out of your life. You think that when he says, I throw it on the altar, he expects some or all? All. He doesn't care how little it is, see? God doesn't care how little it is, but he wants it all. Yep. See, it doesn't matter if you give $1,000 or a penny. He wants to make sure, did you give all? All. That's what God wants. See, God's an understanding God. He'll use anybody. That's a great thing. Oh, I'm weak, I'm unskilled, I'm small, and, you know, I'm such a loser, and I sin and mess up a lot. Hey, man, God can use anybody. I want to encourage you that much. You'd be surprised how much God can take you to the next level. I'm not perfect myself. You'd be surprised how much God would do that. But it's when you say, here's all the nails, Lord. It's only until you come to that point where you say all. Amen. Not most. Not 99%. The challenge I give to you today, which may be the hardest thing you will ever do because some of you have never experienced what it's like to give up all. But I promise you this, it will change your life forever. Because it changed my life. Hey, I still mess up here and there. I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm not the most holy person. You'd be surprised. All you're seeing is something online on a screen. That's all you're seeing. You're only seeing the good in me on the screen. But outside of that, man, Gene Kim is just, you'd be surprised how much human he is like you. Not even that, sometimes even worse than you, you'd be surprised. But see, when I, it doesn't matter how low you are, because God proved it to me. I've seen it, and I wish you could understand and see it too. If, oh, the joy of just giving up all. If you just lay down, I'll, look, stop being stubborn. Stop holding on to the, stop resisting the nail. I mean, Jesus Christ, he let the nail come down all the way. And he let those big nails come down all the way. And he accepted it for you and I. Amen. Let those nails come down on you and say, all of it, Lord. And it will change your life forever. Amen. Hey, you know, I know that we all struggle, okay? I know you're not perfect. And some of you might be scared, well, that's going to be too much of a challenge. Trust me. Hey, when you get saved in Jesus Christ, hey, did you become a preacher immediately? Did all of you become professional soul winners after that? Did all of you went gung-ho and 100% perfect for Jesus Christ after that? No. Far be from it, right? Yeah. Every one of you, how many of you were like saying, man, I got a long way to go after that? <laughs> Everyone says that. But see, the people who said that, I realized, were the ones who gave up all first. And then you know what? If you compared yourself just even months ago. Isn't it amazing how God took you so much? See, God is gentle, gracious, compassionate. He knows your levels. That's right. God knows you. What could go wrong when you give up all to him? That means you doubt how he cares for your life. You give up all to yourself because you trust only yourself. But you can't give it up all to the one who gave up all for you. Every head bow and every eye shut. I want to encourage you to slam that nail on this altar. Pound that nail, whatever nail is left. 
Look, not look. Don't give the same nails over and over. Look, give the one that you're clinging on to, the one that you're struggling, the one that you're being stubborn. Hammer that nail on the ground. Hammer that nail on your flesh, that wicked flesh that needs to be crucified. Hammer it down. Here's a time that we give to you where you can pray on your seat or come here on the altar, however way the Lord leads your heart, and then just pound that nail. One rusty nail, ah, one rusty nail made a big difference. For my life, it did. For my dad's life, it did. It made us lose a soul almost. One nail, one nail. Oh, the joy of giving up all. Just give up all. How, how can things go wrong with the one who gave up all for you? What are you afraid of? I'm afraid of persecution. I'm afraid of this attack. I'm afraid that I'm going to be called to preach. I'm afraid of what are you afraid of? God knows your limitations. God knows how much time you need to learn and grow. God's not going to, you'd be surprised. God might not even call you to teach or preach at all. Just a regular member. You'd be surprised. The riches that you gave up to him, God will let you keep the riches. And maybe even make you more rich physically. You'd be surprised. There are people who gave up their jobs for the Lord, and then the Lord would make them keep the job or even make promote them to a better job. But see, he wants to see your heart first if you're willing to give up all. Well, what if it comes? What if the thing that I dread comes down? Well, when it happens, I can encourage you in this much. He knows you can handle it. He knows the grace that you can conquer it. He knows it's good for you. You've just been too spoiled for so long. You need to clean up a little bit, mature a little bit, face a little bit of stress and resistance. Even secular scholars teach stress can be uh, a little bit of stress. A balanced portion is good for you. It strengthens your maturity, your thinking, your life, and your health. Giving up all is the greatest thing you can ever do in life. Let's review the nails. Your Bible reading your prayer, your gifts, your tithing, how well you participate in the ministry, knowledge, subject with genuine humility, and love with genuine sincerity. I'm surprised how much time we have, so let's take out our red hymn books. If you all please stand, if you'll please stand. You got your red hymnal. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Last verse, all to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with thy love and power, let thy blessings fall on me. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Brother Sean, close the service with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. I yeah. thank you so much, Father, for bringing all these people here today, Lord God. Thank you for Amen. I can only speak for myself, Heavenly Father, but when I think about those rusty nails that have been given to me that I did not even deserve, Father God. That's good, brother. There's so Amen. much more than rusty nails. We look at them as rusty nails. Yeah, are, that's right. They are vital, Lord God. 
to the blessings that we can have in our lives. And I personally, Lord, I, I thank you so much for this preaching. It really is. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Yeah. And Praise I pray Lord. by your grace, oh God, that none of us would want to skip these steps. It's amen. It's the process, Lord. Like, yes. like Pastor said, you may never call us to do this thing we're afraid of or that amen. thing. Yeah, that's right. Of. All you want, all you want, Lord God, just like with Abraham, all you want is what's his heart. That's right. Lord God, so I pray that as we surrender all on the altar to you today, Lord God, I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would do it with a good heart. Amen. I pray that it would be acceptable to you, Heavenly Father. I pray Amen. for your perfect will in each and every one of uh, the lives of the people in this room and watching online, Heavenly Father, as we get closer and closer to the rapture of the church. Please, Lord God, help us to use those rusty nails to build something for you, Lord, that would please you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone without works through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure, you could say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell, and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you.